we can use the intercept form of a linear equation to model various situations. This equation tells us that the driver started 220 miles from San Diego and got 40 miles closer every hour. Our equation for the number of calories burned in a workout is missing the A. But that's just because he hadn't burned any calories yet when his workout started. The coefficient of X tells us that he burned 5 calories every minute during his workout. Not everything has to be real world in math class. Take a moment to write an equation that shows the relationship between the figure number and the dots. I'm going to write the number of dots in each figure. We notice that the number of dots is increasing by 2 each time. So our equation will have a starting value of 1, and the coefficient of x will be 2. This equation that tells us that we start with one dot and add two more dots each time. In this lesson, you will continue to develop your skills with equations, graphs, and tables of data by exploring the role that the value b plays in the intercept form equation. On a cold, windy day, the temperature you feel is colder than the actual temperature because of the wind chill factor. In the next example, we'll look at the relationship between actual temperatures and wind chills by using an input-output table to study the rate of change. The table relates approximate wind chills for different temperatures when the wind is 15 miles per hour. We call temperature the input variable because that's the variable that we choose. The wind chill is the output variable. The top row is going by fives. The bottom row is going by 6.4. We could actually figure that out using subtraction. So to go from negative 25.8 to negative 19.4, we need to add 6.4 because negative 19.4 minus negative 25.8 equals 6.4. Notice that negative 13 minus negative 19.4 also equals 6.4. So as the temperature increases by fives, the bottom row increases by equation for the wind chill problem, let's formalize what we know about the rate of change. The inputs are going by 5. The outputs are going by 6.4. So the rate of change equals 6.4 over 5. Let's simplify that so we have 1 in the denominator. So the rate of change equals 6.4 over 5, or 1.2 over 8, which equals just 1.28. This means that for every 1 degree increase in temperature, the wind chill increases by 1.28 degrees. Notice how the graph of the wind chill problem shows us the same thing. For every 5 degree increase in temperature, the wind chill increases 6.4 degrees. So we see the rate of change in the table, and also in the graph. The rate of change is equal to the change in output values as the input value increases by one. You can calculate the rate of change by dividing the change in output values by the change in input values. In our equation, that will be the letter B. In the San Diego problem, the driver gets 40 miles closer to San Diego every hour. So the rate of change is negative 40. 
In the exercise problem, the number of calories burned increases by five every minute. Every extra minute of exercise means you burn five more calories. The next figure has two more dots. In intercept form, the value of B is the rate of change. Using what we know about the rate of change, let's figure out an equation for the windshield problem. We already calculated that the rate of change for the windshield problem is 1.28. We see from the table that the y-intercept is negative 19.4. So our equation for the windshield problem is y equals negative 19.4 plus 1.28 times x. We can view the windshield problem several different ways. We can view it in words. It feels 1.28 degrees colder for every one degree drop in air temperature. We can view it with numbers. Well, the table showed us the rate of change. We can view it with our equation. The equation tells us what the wind chill is when it's zero degrees, and it also shows us our rate of change. And we can view the wind chill problem as a graph. These four views show us the same information in different ways. Let's try writing an equation using intercept form when the inputs are not in order. Let's look at how the inputs are changing. The inputs are changing by a different amount each time. Let's calculate the rate of change for each row in the column. When the output changes by 18, the input changes by 9. We simplify that to get 2. Let's try the next one. When the output changes by negative 8, the input changes by negative 4. Once again, we get 2. When the output changes by negative 22, the input changes by negative 11. We get 2 again. We have a constant rate of change. So the graph must be linear. Let's use the intercept form of the equation to write an equation for this table. The table shows us what the y-intercept is. The y-intercept happens when x is 0. So our equation must be y equals negative 4 plus 2x. And finally, sometimes the table doesn't show us the y-intercept. Before we can write the equation in intercept form, we'll need to figure that out. But first, let's figure out the rate of change. In this table, the input values are increasing by 3. And the output values decrease by 12 each time. The rate of change is the change in output values over the change in input values, or negative 12 over 3, which simplifies to negative 4. Once again, the table does not include a row for the y-intercept because it's missing x equals 0. Let's bring in a new table, starting at negative 2, and use the rate of change to get the y-intercept. In this table, the inputs are increasing by 1 each time. And it includes a row for x equals 0. The rate of change is negative 4, so that means when the inputs increase by 1, the outputs decrease by 4. We now see that the y-intercept is 2. And we're ready to write our equation. y equals 2 
plus negative 4x. You may prefer to write that y equals 2 minus 4x. Either way is fine. In this section, we calculated the rate of change using input-output table. Then we use the rate of change and the y-intercept to write equations in intercept form.